Hello out there, environmental engineers, and everyone else who happened to stumble in. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on our mini-series on pipe flow. We'll have at least one more episode in this series. I think this is episode four. Today we're going to be talking about nozzles, basically. And specifically, we're going to be solving the tension force in the bolts of a flange of a nozzle. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but basically um, looking at the tension force necessary to keep the nozzle in place. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let me see if I got, yeah, I think we are working here on our tablet. So what we have here is a pipe of 50 centimeter diameter and a nozzle that constricts to 30 centimeters in diameter. I don't think I drew this to scale properly, but that's okay. And basically, if we were to flow any fluid through here, obviously the nozzle would need to be bolted in place to keep it bolted to the pipe, right? And depending on a number of factors, there's going to be tension in these bolts and we want to know what that tension is because as engineers we want to make sure we have enough bolts. You do not want this thing suddenly failing because it could be catastrophic, right? So in this case we have, uh, you know, this pipe and nozzle configuration and then we have a flow rate of 0.01 cubic meters per second. Um, this time we're working in SI units, a little bit unusual for, for this channel. And we have an upstream pressure of 80 kilopascals. So now the question is, how do we, we solve this? Well, it's basically going to be a couple of things. It's going to be a sum of the forces, and it's going to be um, taking into consideration the change in momentum, or in other words, conservation of momentum. So if we look at this, we have flow going into our control volume, right? We have this force F1 moving through the pipe, and then we have a force F2 moving backwards through the nozzle, and then we have the force of the bolts in tension holding everything together, right? So basically working backwards towards, um, towards the pipe. If we sum these forces, we're going to have the sum of the forces, in this case, in the x direction. So in this case, if we have our coordinate axis, we just have obviously x and y. This is in line with the x direction, so we don't have to take into account forces in multiple directions. It's all in one direction in this case. We have our sum of our forces, which is basically F1, F2, and the force in the bolts. It's going to be equal to our mass flow rate, which we can break down into the density of the fluid and the volumetric flow rate of the fluid, right? If you multiply these two together, you're going to get something like kilograms per second. And that is going to be multiplied by the difference in the velocities. So velocity in the x direction at point two as it exits the nozzle minus the velocity in the x-direction at point one as it's flowing through the pipe. Okay, well, we can definitely figure out the velocities pretty easily because we know the cross-sectional area, because we know the diameter of the pipe, and we know the flow rate, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have V1 is equal to our volumetric flow rate of 0 0.1 cubic meters Per second divided by pi over 4, 50 divided by 100 oops, squared is 0 0.510 meters per second. And our V2, as it leaves the nozzle, is going to be the same volumetric flow rate. and just a different area, obviously. And since we're dividing by a smaller area, we will have, of course, a bigger velocity. 
Now, I, I'll go ahead and point out that we, we mentioned the volumetric flow rate. Now, that's going to be the same through both the pipe and the nozzle. Um, we've talked about this in previous episodes. Almost always when we're talking about fluid mechanics, your volumetric flow rate is going to be the same. Your velocities will change, but the volumetric flow rate is not going to change because in order for that to happen, um, something weird is going to have to happen. You're going to have to have buckling of your pipe or something crazy, right? So pretty much always we consider the volumetric flow rate to stay the same. So let's take a look at our forces here. So what is going to be F1? Well, F1 is going to be the pressure in the fluid times this cross-sectional area, right? So F1 equals pressure times area. And F2 is also, of course, going to equal pressure at 2 times area 2. Now, we can solve F1 pretty easily because we have the upstream pressure and we know the area. What about F2? We don't know the downstream pressure, or at least we're not given the downstream pressure. This is going to be a free jet, and if you remember from previous classes or from previous videos, in a free jet, the pressure essentially is zero, right? It's atmospheric pressure. We're going to consider it zero at gauge pressure. So in our sum of our forces, we're going to have F1 equals P1 A1, and F2 is equal to zero because the pressure is equal to zero. So once we sum these forces together, we're going to have P1 A1 minus the force of the bolt, which goes in the opposite direction. And that is going to be equal. That's, that's our sum of our forces in the X direction. That's going to be equal to this mass flow rate, uh, density times volumetric flow rate, times this change in velocity, which we've already solved those um, components, right? So we can actually start plugging this all together. We were given P1, that's our upstream pressure, 80 kilopascals. So let's say 80,000 um, newtons per meter squared newtons, times the area, that's going to be pi over 4, 50 over 100 again, squared meters squared minus F bolt is equal to our density since we're, I did, guess I didn't mention this, but we're using water as we typically do in this channel at least. Um, kilograms per cubic meter, that's the density of water for standard density, times uh, the volumetric flow rate, 0 0.1 meters cubed per second. Uh, and then we have our velocities, right? 1.415 minus 0 0.510 meters per second. And if we you know, do the math on that, we have 15,680 newtons minus the force in our bolts is equal to 90.5 kilogram meters per second squared, which is also a Newton. So we have Newtons and Newtons. So our force in our bolt, or all our bolts, um, is equal to 15,589.5 Newtons. Now, that's, like I said, the force in all the bolts. Probably what you'd be really asked is something like, if the tension, allowable tension, is a certain amount per um, square inch of bolt, and the bolts have a certain cross-sectional area, right? So maybe it's a thousand newtons per square inch, and, and they have cross-sectional area of one square inch, how many bolts are necessary to keep this in place? Um, that's typically the kind of question I would ask anyways. But 
I think you can take it from there. That's how we figure out the force in the bolts, the tension force in bolts when we're bolting on nozzles. Obviously, this force resulting from change in momentum is, is obviously pretty small. Um, so it might be neglected when you're doing actual engineering work, depending on the changes in velocities, how much of the factor that's really going to be uh, and, and how much, you know, how close you really need to get to a real answer. Because a lot of times, you're, obviously, you're going to have a safety factor that is going to be much greater than this tiny little change here. So anyway, but that's how that problem is solved. Um, hopefully that was helpful to you if, if that's, you know, something that you may be having a homework problem or if you're getting ready for the FE, this would definitely be something that could be on the FE, in my opinion. Uh, so hopefully you found it useful. If you did, as always, we do appreciate likes and comments. If you have any questions, definitely don't be afraid to put it in the comments below. And we will see you on the next one.